So Annex A, 513 labeling of information. Let's go through this. Let's have a look at the implementation guide and what you're gonna to need to do. So what is 513 label of information? It is an Annex A control. One of the controls as part of the ISO 27001 standard. One of the controls that we can choose to mitigate the risks that we have for information security. It's a pretty much a no brainer. It is gonna be a required um, control. I can't imagine a situation where we're not going to have it. Uh, so we're going to go through and show you how to implement it and what the changes are in the 2022 update to the standard if you're on a transition. If you're not, then what you need to do anyway uh, without that transition across. So definition. The ISO standard defines Annex A 513 as an appropriate set of procedures for information labelling should be developed and implemented in accordance with the information classification scheme adopted by the organization. So what it's saying there is we're going to come up with an information classification scheme. We covered that in one of the previous tutorials. Be sure to head across uh, and look at that particular control. And then what we're going to do is we're going to develop our labeling approach based on that classification scheme. There's a couple of things that, that we're going to want to get out of that. So what is the purpose? What is it that we're trying to get out of that? So the purpose of this control is to ensure you facilitate the communication of classification of information and support automation of information processing and management. So this is the 2022 update, right? What you're seeing here is within the standard itself, actually a move towards a lot more around the technical implementation, all right? The implementation of the standard, the implementation of the controls, you know, taking into account moves within technology, modern technology, and things that go along with that. What is the biggest change here? Well, the biggest change we're gonna to come to when we look at labeling techniques in a moment is the introduction of metadata. And again, this is one of those that gets people a little bit of a twitchy bum moment, right? People are worrying, oh, how am I gonna implement metadata? What is the cost of implementing metadata? I have to implement metadata. So stick with me in this video and we're gonna go through that um, and touch on that in a lot more detail about what you actually have to do or not do as the case may be. So when we're looking at our implementation guide, what are, what are the things that we're looking at? Let's go through that step-by-step -step implementation guide for you. The prerequisite for this control is having an information classification scheme. We covered that in Annex A 512, right? So in, I, in Annex A 512 classification information, there's a beginner's guide associated with that. I'll link to the blog, I'll link to that below, but you wanna go through that and understand about how we're gonna classify information. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna to look to implement procedures for information labeling, and we're gonna cover information and other associated assets in all formats, right? This is information in all formats, printed format, digital format, you make up your own format, whatever that form format may be. It's good press, it's considered good practice when labeling uh, and where labeling is omitted is to give it a default classification, right? I mean, that's gonna save you a lot of hard work down the line. Uh, it might be, for example, that information that isn't uh, labeled and marked up appropriately could be public, um, specifically really if you know you don't carry a lot of sensitive data you don't have a lot of confidential data you create a lot of marketing materials you know it is unlikely and unusual you know to go through all of your marketing <laughs> materials and actually label them up uh, as public um, so this is specifically looking at to you know the internal documents but have a consideration about how you're going to handle that it really becomes an issue depending on the auditor you get, right? Some of the auditors are a little bit picky and they're like, oh, this document here, this marketing flyer doesn't have labeling on it. You say, right, okay, well, our policies and procedures are gonna cover that. The procedures that you write uh, should give guidance on where and how labels are att attached and the different storage media, right? So we're gonna label up. So, you know, if we've got uh, physical computers, how do we label them up? What's our procedure for that? What is the physical label that goes on that? If we have documents that are, in Microsoft Word, in Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, in Microsoft Excel. What is the labeling? Where are we gonna put those labels? Are we putting it in headers? Are we putting it in footers? Are we putting it in the properties of the document? You know, Where is it that we're putting that information? So we're gonna provide those procedures. Um, we're gonna provide those procedures so people are very clear on what it is that they're gonna do, right? We're gonna train people on what it is that we expect of them. We're gonna communicate that to them. Right, let's look here at one of the potential drawbacks of label of information, we are gonna do that. The standard actually calls this out. 
This gets specific when we're looking at metadata, right? The tagging of data with metadata. Let's talk about that metadata, right? Metadata in 99% of the implementations for small organizations, small businesses and small implementations, I would not do. Now we remember that the standard is about guidance. It's providing guidance. It already provides us guidance on a number of different implementation areas, but it specifically now introduces metadata because metadata is a new technology that they think can increase the information security, confidentiality, integrity, availability of data, the protection of our data. The caveat, the drawback, the thing that this has built into it is if you tag all of your data with metadata, even the basic metadata of whether or not this, doc, uh, this information is confidential, if that data becomes compromised, the issue that you have is you are handing the keys to the kingdom to the person that compromised the data. You're just making their life easier. If I get access to a data set and I search a data set for all confidential data, I can wipe out in an instant all of the fluff, all of the padding, all of the things that I'm not interested in. I'm going to get to the absolute crux of the matter. So the technical implementation of this is going to be absolutely key and you're going to implement it and you're going to be wary of how you implement it. This also clearly goes for other metadata, right? I mean, if you're putting other metadata within your electronic digital data that has things like HR data, payroll data, you know, you're flagging this up. Yes, it makes your life easier as an organization. Yes, it can have, you know, some benefits in terms of how you can search through your data. But remember, when that data is compromised, you're handing the keys to the kingdom, to the compromiser. You've now allowed them an absolute I don't know, like tool of the century, right? For them to be able to search through that data and find exactly what it is that they want. So it has to come with caveats. Uh, metadata is an expensive implementation, right? I know there are different implementations out there, but technically it can be expensive. And it does come with overhead, right? Administrative overhead, resource overhead, people overhead. So what we're doing, as with all of the controls, is we're weighing up the risk that we have. We're weighing up whether or not the control mitigates the risk. We're choosing the controls that are proportionate to the risk, proportionate and appropriate for the risk. And we're implementing them to a level that is appropriate to us. I have seen the situation where, you know, you can place on your risk register. You have to acknowledge the fact that you haven't implemented metadata. You put it on your risk register. Your reason for accepting the risk is that the cost of implementing metadata far out exceeds the risk exposure were the risk exposure to be realized. And therefore, for you, the implementation of metadata does not make sense. So be aware of that. I'm not saying don't do metadata. I'm saying understand the caveats, understand the warnings, understand the issues that come along with it. If it is appropriate for you, go for it. But if not, you have got to get out of jail card and you can just manage that through risks. So what are examples, other examples of labeling techniques? Right? How can we label information? These are common sense, right? I mean, you've been doing it for years. You've got headers, you've got footers within documents, you've got properties within documents, you've got metadata, yes. You've got physical labels, you've got watermarks, you've got rubber stamps if you're proper old school, <laughs> right? You can stick rubber stamps on stuff. So you've got different ways of labeling up your information. When you write your policies, you write your procedures, do what is appropriate and do what is right for you. The bare minimum that I do when I uh, deploy and implement is headers and footers within all digital documents. It's the nice, easiest way, right? I've got a template, I've got a standard format. It's just the nice, easiest way. I implement the information classification and handling policy, the information classification scheme by labeling and placing the classification within headers and footers of documents. And I bear in mind documents that don't traditionally have headers and footers, Excel spreadsheets, they're there, but you've got to find them. People who create PDF documents, people who create PowerPoint documents, you know, these are the ones that are usually going to get missed. But I'm going to put in there within a header or a foot of some level uh, and some indication of the classification of that particular document. There's loads of templates on the ISO 27001 store, the template store over at High Table. Even if you don't want the ISO 27001 toolkit, we've got the information classification policy, the classification summary, the document and record possibly policy, physical asset register, data asset register, all of the documents that you need are on there. This isn't a sell for that. So what we're going to look at is how are we going to comply? How are we going to comply against Annex A513? How are we going to comply against labeling of information? Well, we're going to put in the, the how to the what. We've said what we need to do and we're going to now implement how we're going to do that. So the steps we're going to take, we're going to implement a classification scheme. We're going to implement asset management and we're going to record all of the assets that we've got in asset registers. We're going to write, implement and train people on the labeling processes and procedures. 
We're going to classify all of the assets and we're going to label them appropriately. And we're going to decide if metadata is appropriate to you, us or not. And if it is, to what level and how we're going to go implementing that. What are the three things that an auditor is going to check? Well, you know, auditors like to check many things, right? Uh, let's have a little look at the kind of things that an auditor is going to check, right? First one, that you've implemented metadata. Even if you haven't implemented it, they're going to check whether or not you have or not. So if you have not, have your belts and braces, have your documentation, have your risk management that clearly states why metadata wasn't appropriate for you. Remember, the cost of the risk exposure far outweighs the cost, uh, the cost of the implementation far outweighs the cost of the risk exposure. And it's just too costly, right? And the benefit is it doesn't actually mitigate our risk. So we considered it. We're showing the audit when it comes to the audit. Yeah, we considered it. We looked at it. But for us, it wasn't there. If it is there, they're going to see it in evidence, right? They're going to want you to show them. They're going to want you to show real data sets uh, with the tagging, with the metadata in it. And they're going to want to see the procedures that you have around that, uh, about how you add it, how you remove it, how you change it, how you review it and all the things that go with that. They're also going to check that you have processes and you've followed them and you've trained people. They'll probably speak to people about uh, labelling of information, take evidences of information, gather their understanding, maybe look for training records if you have them, communication records if you have them. That goes back to our communication plan. You know, this is about keeping documentation and evidence, but they want to see those processes and they want to see them in operation. Every single document that you show them, they're going to check that it's got this classification on it, right? No doubt about it. So that's an own goal, right? If you put something in front of them and it hasn't got classification on it and you can't come up with a compelling reason why not, then you've got an own goal, right? And then they're just going to look at documentation in general. So what are three mistakes that people make? People do make mistakes. These are common mistakes, hopefully so that you don't make them. Uh, your information isn't labelled in at number one, right? I've just said it, you know. It's easy to overlook it. If you deal with this stuff day in, day out, you see the same document, but you look, but you do not see. So they're going to check your documentation. They're going to make sure it's labeled. They're going to look on the back of machines, PCs, external hard drives, physical devices, and they're going to look that you're following your labeling and, and your classification scheme. They're going to want to see that in action. They may even look at paper records if you've got paper records, right? So they're going to make sure that it's there. Biggest mistake is you haven't done it. You haven't followed. You haven't done what it is that you said that you do do. Another one is one or, me one or more members of the team hasn't done what they should do. It falls in with a number one, right? It's almost like a, a 1B. Uh, you know, you're going to find a particular team somewhere, usually HR or IT. You know, they're creating technical documents, PDFs, network diagrams, and they haven't labeled them up. HR creating organization charts, putting out organization charts, and they haven't labeled them up. So one or, mem one or more members of the team haven't done what they should have done. Final mistake you make is about your document version control, right? You can't show the document is a living document. You're not following your own standards for document labeling, uh, for document markup. We've covered that elsewhere, you know, version control, what changed, when it changed, who changed it, the date of the change, the version of the document, all aligned all nicely within the document. So it all follows through. Um, so that's going to be the main ones that you're going to go through. They're the three biggest mistakes. Recap, let's have a summary. Have a classification scheme, have policies and procedures around how you label documents, how you label physical devices, how you label all of your data assets. Apply it, make sure you're doing it. Consider the use of metadata and if you discount it, make sure that you have a risk register item for it and you have a compelling reason that shows that the control didn't mitigate the risk that you have. If you implement all of those, you are going to be absolutely golden. So my name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. We're continuing our journey through Annex A. Stick with me as we go on to the next blog. Be sure to link, like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next blog, video, tutorial. Peace out.